Hello, Mr. Kennedy. Um, my question is on the topic of nuclear war, which you've addressed very well in your commencement address, which I think was one of the most important speeches given by a candidate. Um, I'm personally an organizer for an organization called the International Peace Coalition. We've been organizing peace organizations across the world to really unite against this threat of nuclear war, you know? And we really, can't, we really have to bridge the gap, you know, as you said, because it no longer matters what our ideologies may be, what our particular beliefs are. Humanity is on the brink of annihilation, and we need to unite on that matter no matter what. Yeah, but we need uh, a question, please. I, I'm getting to it, thank you. Um, but I want, because Kennedy, it, you talked about, his American University speech, I think is probably one of the most important speeches. You know, we need a peace that's not for the grave, but a peace where all our families, everyone can cherish. Um, and I want you to talk about that, and I really want you to endorse what we're doing with this peace coalition. And Helga Zeblerou, she was the one who organized this. We need a she, question, please. She, she's calling for a new, she's calling for a durable security architecture among question, all the nations please. of the world. So I would like you to, I would like you to endorse that, and I'd like you to talk about the American University <laughs> speech. Well, I, first of all, I, I love what you said. Thank you for everything that you said, thank you. And, uh, and thank you for advocating for that because it's so critical right now. I mean, we're, uh, we're in, a, uh, in a, ex a potentially existential battle with, uh, with Russia. I mean, the U.S. is now ta is effectively at war with Russia. It's a nuclear power, and they have a thousand more nuclear weapons than we do. And nobody seems to be caring about this. So, uh, you know, I love, uh, I love what you said. My uncle, in that speech, which I agree was one of the most important speeches in American history, um, he, you know, he wanted to, he, he had negotiated secretly a, a nuclear uh, test ban treaty with Khrushchev. My uncle and Khrushchev had developed this extraordinary friendship with each other where they could talk to each other on a, on a hotline. Their State Department, their intelligence apparatus all wanted to go to war, but both of them had been to war. And Khrushchev had been at Stalingrad. Um, the last thing he wanted was to go to war. And he recognized that he was a partner with my uncle. They wrote each other 26 secret letters. The first one was smuggled to, we had a Soviet spy that one, who used to visit our house when I was a little boy. His name is Georgi Bolshakov, and he was a, and we loved him, the kid, my, me and my 10 brothers and sisters. He would play with us, he would do Cossack dancing, he would climb ropes with my dad and, and do push-up contests, and he was a very charming guy. And it was cool for us, because we knew he was a KGB spy and a GRU spy. <laughs> And this was at a time when all the James Bond films were coming out, so it was cool having a spy in our house. <laughs> but my, but uh, my uncle Khrushchev knew he couldn't trust the people, his military apparatus, and my uncle knew that he couldn't trust his. They began corresponding with each other, hiding their letters in the New York Times, which Georgi Bolshakov would fly back and forth from Moscow and give them. And they, uh, they devised a plan to create the first nuclear weapons treaty of the, of the nuclear age, which was a nuclear test ban treaty. And, uh, and when my uncle, for, and they negotiated it secretly, they kept the State Department, the CIA out of it, and, they, uh, and they, when they got the, the, the treaty, the U.S. sympathy for that treaty was 80 to 20 against it. And the military was in rebellion against my uncle. Uh, the Senate and House, even the Democrats, were all against it. And that speech was the beginning of turning the tide. And what he said, he said something extraordinary to the American people. Because we had all been raised with this idea that we had won the war. You know, it was America who beat Hitler. And, you know, we were watching shows like Vic Morrow and Combat on TV that showed Americans beating the Nazis and winning the war. And my uncle said, no, it was the Russians who won the war. The Russians, the Russians, one out of every seven Russians was killed. They, Hitler leveled a, a third of the country, he said, 
Imagine if every city was reduced to rubble, every forest, uh, every field burned, every forest burned between the East Coast and Chicago. That's what happened to Russia. And he said, we need to put ourselves into their shoes. We need to put ourselves in the shoes of our adversary. And, um, and, he, and it was the first time Americans had heard that, and they started thinking differently about it. And that, two months later, that, that treaty passed. And, you know, I think it's important to think of today, because nobody has talked to Putin for a year. We have no high-level relationship with Russia. We need to be talking to them. We need to do what my uncle said, which is to put ourselves in the shoes of our adversaries.